worship God with all we've got tonight. Do you want you to stand with us? Let me see your head. And if you know this, would you sing this with us? We're singing.
Well, the stage is opening up underneath me and I can see what is really a watery grave because old natures have been left down here. Amen, in the water. And people are coming up, identifying with Jesus Christ here at Hills Campus. We're gonna continue to worship, but as we do, you'll see on the screens, we're about to baptise something like 55 people, maybe more uh, tonight. And uh, every one of these, these lives, and if those of you who have been baptised, if you have not already come and just line up here and get ready, this is gonna be powerful. We'll keep worshipping, but also let's lend our faith and give that sense of celebration about people connecting and identifying with Jesus. That's what water baptism does. Hey, shush. Only room for one person to talk right now. And that's me, else I'll be chucking you in these waters. You got that? And so, <laughs> I'm such a gentle pastor. Well, listen to me, friends. I really do believe that what's happening now has got spiritual power. That's what people are doing here tonight. They're identifying fully with Jesus Christ. So Father, I just pray for every person now who goes through these waters. And I thank You in Your mighty Name, Lord, that old natures are being left behind and we come up identifying with Jesus. We thank You, Father, that You, Lord, You showed us the way when it came to water and baptism, but we're not just baptised into the baptism of John, we're baptised into the baptism of Jesus. And we thank You for it in Your mighty Name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's keep worshipping Jesus.
Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the greatest of all our nations. Beautiful. Our redemption, our salvation, it's in His blood. Could you put your hand towards all these prayer requests? Some of them will come up on the screen behind me. We're a praying church. Let's all lean in. Let's believe God this year. It's going to be a year of incredible miracles. And Father, right now, we thank You for the work that Jesus has done. Right now, we've seen over 80 people make a decision, Father, leaving their old nature behind and coming up cleansed. It's the miracle of baptism, the miracle of salvation. And Lord, that same miracle, you're working at homes and families. You can work miracles with our physical body, Lord, on the internal parts of our life. Lord, I pray that this will be a year of reconciliation, a year of marriages restored, a year of incredible answered prayers. We believe you're giving us story, a story that points to the goodness of God. And we thank you for answered prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Vision Sunday. We just linked all the way around Australia and of course in Bali in Indonesia, an important part of our church. So happy Vision Sunday. Take a moment, tell someone beside you, happy Vision Sunday. Tell them you're glad to see them in church. Sounds significant. 2020. Be a good year to get married, really, wouldn't it? Amazing. <laughs> We're excited. At the other end of the service, after we've had a powerful time praying and been inspired by vision, we've got a great group of Irish guys. They're called Rend Collective. They're actually over here. Just stand up so people can see your smiling faces. Yeah, amazing. And uh, well, they're touring Australia. We're blessed to have you here tonight as part of our Vision Sunday. So Christopher, Christopher and Gareth. Gareth, is that Irish? Welsh, yeah, who knows? It's all mixed blood over there. Who knows? It's all, yeah. Well, listen to me. We're really blessed to have you here. And, uh, in fact, Chris sung one of their worship songs in the five o'clock service. Fantastic. It's going to be an incredible, incredible end to the service. And we're really glad you're here. We had a really, really powerful part one of Vision Sunday this morning. Many of you would have missed that, of course, because you're Sunday evening people. But I really do hope that somehow you get the chance to have a look at the vision and listen to the message from this morning, get it in your spirit, because I believe God's given us a firm direction for this year. And we want you to be a part of it. And you know what? Last year we had a faith decree around our giving. And I'm gonna believe this year with a new faith decree, 2020, that we're really gonna see people be able to testify that they've been able to see that happen in their lives. And so we're about to receive a tithe, our offering. Of course, it's something we do every weekend and it's a big part of our worship. 
It's an important part of what we do. But I'm gonna ask everyone in a moment, with me, I just hope you can read it all the way up the back there, to read this decree, your faith decree, our faith decree. If you just like to get ready, of course, there's all the ways that people love to give. It's not up there right now, but people can give through the app. They say that's the easy way. And obviously you just give the way we used to old school. Uh, that's just put something in the container. That works pretty well as well. But what I do know is we're blessed to have the opportunity and in the start of a new year and you're setting your own personal vision for the year, I pray that we really do set plan and a vision when it comes to putting God first in our lives. So I want everyone to stand together. If you're preparing, just keep preparing, keep getting ready. Or if you're obviously getting, you know, used to ready to give electronically, you'd, you'd be doing all that still. But as much as we can read it, I'm gonna ask everyone to join me and we're gonna read this decree. Hands up if you can't read that. Hands up if you can't. So you can all see it. Everyone can see it. Man, you guys got bionic eyes. That's pretty awesome, pretty powerful. Okay then, you can read it, but no excuse. We're gonna say this, we're gonna declare it together, everyone, but speak it, just speak it over your own life and let's believe it together. Here we go. I am a child of God, a new creation made in His image and committed to His cause. In 2020, my faith is in Jesus and my hope is in Your Name, Lord. You are Jehovah Jireh, my source, my deliverer and my supply. You are all sufficient. You never fail me. And even in my darkest hours, my confidence is in You. I give You first place in my life, Lord. And I choose to live generously and in obedience to Your Word. I believe Your favour and fruitfulness are on my life, on my home and on my endeavours. I believe the wind of Your Spirit and the fragrance of heaven are framing my year. I believe You have been generous to me. You are working significantly in me. Now, Lord, use me and do something significant through me. This is my decree. Can you say Amen? Amen. So with that, let's be seated again. And Father, I pray that over people's lives, Lord, I pray that that won't just be words on a screen, that it'll be words written in our hearts and in our spirit. Because Father, we know that You answer prayer. So Lord, as we decree that, as we believe for that, and as people are obedient to Your Word, I pray Your Word will be constantly working in our lives. And we thank You for it in the Name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, Amen, Amen. Come on, let's pass the containers. Let's receive the giving. You look all pretty squished in tonight. I like it, I like it. Fantastic. And so we're gonna be watching the screen. Tuesday night, of course, big night here in Australia, our heart and soul. It's kind of like part three of our vision. It gives me the chance Tuesday night to unpack a whole lot of the stuff that uh, we just touch on. And we've got a whole lot more things to talk about. I'm gonna talk about my personal goals for the decade, for the 2020s. So. We're looking forward to that. Come on, let's watch the screens together. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, very present help. Lord, I just pray in Jesus' Name that the presence of God will permeate people's hearts. The Holy Spirit's never far from any one of us. He's not hiding from you. Lord, to have Your way. We believe You for victory and healing. We believe You for breakthrough, new beginnings, Father, a complete divine turnaround. Well, listen, we are handing out right across our church, all locations, these little magnets. They can go on your fridge, on the refrigerator. Holy Spirit significance, wind of the Spirit, fragrance of heaven. And that's what really we're wanting to see happen. We're believing for the, the fragrance of heaven, really to bring God's majesty into the lives of people and for God's majesty to blow and breathe on our lives, bring fruitfulness, bring the fragrance of heaven. Do you know, in Acts chapter two, it talks about 
like a mighty rushing wind. It's talking about the church, of course, and 120 believers up in Jerusalem. And in that upper room in Jerusalem, listen to what happens. It says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all, they were all in. Everybody was in. They were all with one accord in one place. That's what the Scripture says. And then in verse two, suddenly, listen to it, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. And listen, I love the fact that it filled the whole house where they were sitting. A mighty rushing wind filled the whole house. Well, listen to me, friends. I believe that when the Holy Spirit truly is here, He visits us so powerfully. He doesn't just visit, He abides with us, obviously. But the manifest presence of God that literally, like the Scripture says, it fills the whole house. No spectators, nobody looking on. Everybody engaged. When God brings one of His suddenlies, maybe there's things you believe God for for a long, long, long time, but yet you're not seeing them happen. In just a few moments after our vision presentation, we're gonna be praying, we're gonna be laying hold of God. But right now, do you have expectation? 2020, like a mighty rushing wind for God suddenly to fill the whole house. I love it when God takes hold of a service and bang, suddenly, you can tell it becomes intense. The presence of God is moving. In Isaiah 6 verse 1, Isaiah, he's envisioning and he talks about the year when King Uzziah died. Listen, he said, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. That's what happened to Jesus, of course, on the cross. He was high and lifted up, high and lifted up. And the train of His robe filled the temple. Listen, I'm believing this year for services where the Spirit of God fills the temple, where the presence of God, amen, the train of His temple fills the temple. That means that all of us, we wanna have that Spirit where we can't get here early enough. And we hope that it never ends because like a mighty rushing wind, we're about to stand, we're about to sing, I surrender like a mighty wind. And like I say, in a minute, we'll receive this video, but I wanna get you filled with anticipation for the prayer time, the mega prayer time, we're about to happen. Come on, everyone sing this, sing it in faith, in Jesus' Name, like a rushing like wind. Like a rushing wind. Jesus. Jesus, breathe with Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me. Like a mighty storm. Like a mighty storm. Stir within my soul. Jesus! Jesus! 
Father, like a mighty rushing wind, you come, Lord. We say, come, Lord. We say, come, Holy Spirit. Invade our lives, invade our years, invade our church, we pray. Lord, we just thank You in Jesus' Name for all we're about to receive. And Lord, before the service is over, I know before You call, we call, You answer. Lord, before we call, Lord, You even go before us. You're already there. You're already in the miracle. And we thank You, Lord. We're about to see the miracles. In Jesus' Name, Amen, Amen, Amen. Be seated for a minute. We'll come right back in and singing like a rushing wind. But right now, many of you saw part one of our vision this morning. It was so beautiful, so inspiring. I'm going to ask your whole church now to enjoy and to be inspired by stories as we look at part two. Amen. Hillsong Vision 2020. Hillsong Church, with its 100,000 weekly attendees spread in 25 countries, could from the outside appear a little overwhelming. But what does it look like on the inside to the person attending? Beyond the large-scale numbers, who are the people that keep coming back week after week? For starters, I'm one of them. My name is Ashley John baptiste I'm a presenter, reporter, and investigative journalist at the BBC in the UK. And I'm on a journey to uncover some of the stories from across the global reach of this church that I and so many others call home. So far, this journey has taken me to Australia, Berlin and Barcelona, but I'm far from finished. I'm about to cross the Atlantic and visit some of the campuses in the Western Hemisphere. I'm in California, in a sleepy town an hour and a half away from San Francisco, to visit Sean, Claudia and their son Jackson, who I'm told recently experienced something quite special. Hello. Hi guys, lovely to meet you. We have a full dog that we have to put in the oh, garage. Oh, hello. Like, like you. Hello. <laughs> They're what I pictured an American family to be. Sean coaches the local baseball team that his son Jackson is on. He played majors this year. Really? Yeah, as a 10-year-old. Are you coach? Yeah, I'm the head coach for this team here. You want to show him how to hit? Yeah, go on. <laughs> when it comes all the way back around, you hit it. OK. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Not long ago during practice one day, the family's world was turned upside down when Jackson suddenly lost his hearing. Jackson's, you know, he's not listening to me. He's not doing the drills. I'm like, what is this kid doing? I think he's just not listening because I'm his dad. I'm the coach. So I'm yelling at him, and I'm yelling at him a little louder than the other kids, right, because he's my kid. And um, he turns around, and he's like, I can't hear out of my right ear. And I just kind of, like, paused for a second, and I was like, what do you mean you can't hear out of your, your ear? And he's like, I can't hear out of this ear. He's always had normal hearing tests ever since he was a newborn. So when he told us he lost his hearing, we were like, what is going on? Audiologist did three different tests. The prognosis was sensory neurological hearing loss. So the left was going to be a little bit, and then the right was a lot of hearing loss. We went to another doctor, and they said the same thing. Going from doctor to doctor seeking second opinions, the diagnosis remained consistent. The prognosis describing the significant hearing loss is irreversible, leaving no room for any hope of recovery. You know, you got five doctors telling you that this is it. We're always going to believe like when a doctor tells us, right? Like you're sick, you have the flu, you have strep throat, whatever you have, right. like, you believe what they say, proven, you know? Right? To accommodate for the new reality, Adjustments were made to Jackson's everyday life, including special treatment in school and hearing aids to try to counteract the hearing loss. But Jackson remained unwavering in his faith and his commitment to attending church. I remember one morning, you know, waking up and, you know, we drive an hour and a half to go to church. And so I was like, hey, let's just stay home, have a lazy day. And he's like, I'm not skipping it. He's like, you can skip it, but I'm still going. <laughs> It's just yeah. the type of kid he is, so, you know, inspires, you know, inspiring to us. The 
family attends Hillsong San Francisco, which is part of Hillsong, California, and locally headed up by Brendan and Jackie Brown. Wow. The Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, the Golden Gate Bridge out there, Alcatraz just over to the right. Union Square, where we have church, is kind of just down through these buildings to the left down here. How has it been starting church out here? I think the biggest thing that we've realised is that people crave community. Yeah. You hear testimonies and stories all the time of people saying, I've met family here, I've met community here. We were praying for, uh, for just friends for the boys, you know, Pioneering Church has been one of those things that you don't always have young families to start with and so we are praying that young families would come and, and these, this family rocked up one weekend and just have such a beautiful presence about them and Jaden and Jensen and Jackson just connected straight away and Basically, it was almost like they knew each other from, from years ago, and it was awesome. They became friends straight away. On Vision Sunday a few years ago, Brendan and Jackie shared their story of how their own kids are faced with a rare skin condition and are still believing for a miracle. But while waiting for their own breakthrough, they've continued to believe for the healing of others. My boys, with their health challenges, they, they know what it's like to pray and believe for miracles. and. Look, we're still believing for a miracle with our kids. So there's that tension of, of faith and reality, the now and the not yet. You know, you're looking at that and you go, well, what are we gonna believe? Are we gonna believe the facts or are we gonna believe what that God says that God can heal? And so as a church, we all prayed and, and anointed Jackson with oil. And I guess it was just a normal thing for us to go, all right, well, let's believe that God can heal Jackson's ear and uh, we'll find healing and God's miraculous power. Brendan, like, he went, like, out of his way and, like, you know, he was always, hey, let's pray over him, like, yeah. everybody pray over him, lay hands on him, mm -hmm. like, after church, having, you know, somebody there that's encouraging you and saying, hey, some things like that you might not think are possible mm -hmm. are possible mm -hmm. and giving you that hope and that faith that, you know, um, that it can happen. After years of believing God for a miracle, Claudia and Sean started noticing that Jackson didn't want to wear his hearing aid anymore. I was telling him like, hey, why are you not wearing your hearing aid in class? Like, you're supposed to be wearing it. He was never wearing it. And the teacher was like, he's not wearing it. And I said, why aren't you wearing your hearing? He's like, I think my hearing's getting better. You know, it's like when he first told me, I can't hear out of this ear. They'd say it so like simple and matter of fact. I can't hear out of this ear. Like, I think it's getting better. And I'm like thinking to myself like, it can't really get better. I just like felt like a lot clearer. I could, I could hear better in my right ear and in my left. In order to find out what really happened and to try to get some medical evidence, they took Jackson back to get his hearing tested again. They were shocked by the results. So, so I made the appointment. So check this out. So this is the same place. It shows here he had a moderate to severe sensorineurological hearing loss in the right ear with a low frequency hearing loss in the left. The latest audiogram here, all of them are matching up. She's like, I don't, I can't explain to you medically how he got his hearing back. And here it says, Because Jackson's hearing is significantly improved, it is recommended that he not wear his hearing aid. Really I can get teary-eyed, but I just know that it was because of Jesus Christ. Like, he made a miracle for us. I prayed over Jackson every night for two years for him to be healed. And then when it actually did happen, it's, it's overwhelming, man. Hearing this story and seeing these medical reports in person is yet another encouragement that God is on the move in his church and that miracles do happen in our day and age. And it's clear that the role of community in Jackson's close-knit friendships with other kids in church has played a big part in the journey. What's amazing is that speaking to these guys earlier, they were preparing for a life of their son not being able to hear. But you guys were adamant that Jackson could get healed and you were praying with these guys relentlessly for, for nearly a year or over a year. Yeah, I mean, Jesus is... The Bible talks about how he went around doing good and healing people. And the Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And watching Jaden and Jensen, like we would often pray for Jackson at home. Often I think children experience faith through their parents, but I feel like this was a touch for them, a touch of God that they got to experience. So. Yeah. God doesn't give kids a junior Holy Spirit. It's the same Holy Spirit wow. for anyone, you know, it's the same Jesus and it's the same message for every generation. It's awesome.
Fine with you, boys. Yeah. Jack. Hey, Jackson, buddy. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What does it mean for you to have mates like these? It just feels like I'm appreciated. Do oh. well, you remember? But that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, guys. I appreciate you too. Oh. <laughs> This may sound like a bit of an obvious question, but some people would ask it, I imagine. Is God really on the move in our church? <laughs> I look at natural things, but realize they're supernatural because there's no way it could be happening. We but, certainly know it's not us. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Why can a church go into a city like New York and from the very beginning have several thousand people turn up? <laughs> and I think the way our worship has not only for a short time, uh, impacted virtually every continent of the world, but over now 25 years, and it's still increasing and growing. There's no, there's no way that could be marketed. It makes no sense. That's why people sit back and scratch their heads. Uh, and the truth is, it's it's a, it's a spiritual work. It's 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 the hand of God. I'm so excited about this. My first time in Brazil, uh, Latin America. I have no idea what to expect. Well, one thing's for sure, coming to Latin America changes your life. <laughs> yeah. Something about the culture that just gets on the inside. Yeah, yeah. I've arrived in Sao Paulo, the largest city on the South American continent. Many would agree that the people from Latin America are known for their passion, and Brazil is no exception. When Hillsong United started touring here many years ago, they noticed that the zeal of the crowds was extraordinary. But is this passion just hype and fleeting fandom for a band, or does it go deeper? I've come here to find out, as Hillsong United are back in town for the first time in six years. There might be a misconception of, it's just a bit of hype, you know? It's, yeah. it's, it's a crowd, it's, you know, you hear about Brazilians absolutely, you know, fanboy and fangirl and over Hillsong United, but there's something so much deeper. What I think people are capturing is that uh, this isn't about a band, mm. that everything flows out of a strong local church. Yeah. The hype and all that, that, that can only ever last for a while, yeah. the emotion of it. But the stories that come out of nights like yeah. this are absolutely amazing. We've got people on our staff here in our church in Sao Paulo that got saved in a United wow. night many, many years ago. Mm, mm, you know, so mm. that's the fruit of Brilliant. nights like tonight. Yeah. But before I go to the event tonight, I'm off to meet Eloisa, whose life has been greatly impacted by the music of Hillsong Church. Wow, look at this place. Yeah. We're right in the heart of the city. Yeah, yeah. She's invited me over to hear yeah, some of exactly. her story and how the culture here has affected her. My whole life was a dream for me to be part of a church. I always had tattoos, I always had piercings. We had here in Brazil a lot of people judging you. How did Christians respond to the fact that you had tattoos? They make the, the cross sign for me, actually, a lot of times. It's like, oh my God, go away. <laughs> they said that to you? Yeah. I never thought I can be me and be at a church. On top of the rejection from other Christians, Eloisa suffered from anxiety through her teenage years until one day when she started finding comfort through worship music. Every time that I hear the worship song, it was really inspiring. When I have a really bad anxiety crisis, worship is something that settles up down, that relaxes me. So it's really important for me to deal with anxiety. If you listen to some music, you will see a really real relationship. It's about having a personal relationship with God. The gospel is compelling, it's not repelling. Each of us have to really think about the way we, we portray the gospel. If we are people who love life, love people, are hope-filled, are filled with the, the message of Christ and the words of Christ, then people will be attracted to that. The night starts five hours from now, and you see these people lining up for hours, yeah. waiting under the sun, and it's absolutely amazing. There's individuals in that crowd that are broken. Yeah. There are, there's gonna be individuals in that crowd that don't know Jesus. Yeah. 
there's going to be individuals in that crowd that are disconnected from a spiritual family, mm -hmm. from a church. And so the potential that is in a night like tonight is yeah, right. endless. Wow. Looking at these thousands of people already lined up, it's hard to fathom the impact that this one night might have on each individual life represented. My first time uh, in a concert, United concert, was in 2006. My relationship with God changed. The way that I see God, the way that I, I talk to Him, changed completely. Before, I saw a God of judgment that pointing my mistakes, and now, a God of love. With only hours to go until the start of the event, I can tell that the expectations are building, both within the people attending, as well as within the Hillsong United team. Why is music an important part of outreach when it comes to our church in places like Brazil? I think that it is one of the most incredible outreaches wow. and opportunity that God has blessed us as a church to be able to do. And the reason that we do everything that we do is so people can encounter the truth of how great God is. And I guess what would be distinctive of, you know, here in Brazil is just they've got that Brazilian passion. And so just that faith and yeah. the way they express it, being such a passionate people. You know, you see on the TV the, the soccer fans, the football yeah. fans. South America and exactly how they are with church and, and the worship by there. You hear them in the background now, like we're an hour and a half away from starting and they're chanting and going crazy. You know, people today were messaging saying, We've waited 14 years to see you guys. Like that's, you just don't think about that kind of stuff. How long have you been waiting for Hillsong United to come to Brazil? Six years! I'm not from here, I'm from Paulo, I'm from Minas, it's like 12 hours. God is going to be here, I know this. We've missed you guys, it's been far too long. Ah, a gente sentiu muita saudade de vocês, demorou muito pra gente voltar. And the Spirit of the Living God is here. E o Espírito de Deus vivo está aqui. We know that because he inhabits the praises of his people. Every single life here. Every story here. It matters to God. Standing in this field of 20,000 people in Sao Paulo, singing out our worship to God under an open night sky, I realise this feels like home. Like that feeling of home that I've experienced back with my church family at Hillsong in London. And yet, to countless here tonight, this is a rare experience. Jesus gave us the strategy, it's called the Great Commission. <laughs> Go you into all the world wow. and preach the gospel. Yeah. Doing everything we can to reach people. You know, there's certainly over seven billion people in the world, they all need Jesus. And so we're quite intentional about where we go and where we start. I've always found that if you have the right people in the right place at the right time, that God seems to bless it. Without missing a beat, Hillsong Sao Paulo gather for church many times over the following day. Many who volunteered until late last night at the event spend their whole Sunday here serving those who've come. The lines go around the block and the expectations are high as people attend from far and wide. It's your first time? Yes, it is, it is. Are you from Sao Paulo? And you invited her? Yes. It's my first time. It's your first time? Yes. Oh, wow. So it's your second time and you've already brought someone yes. new? Sometimes we plant a new location and people turn up, they come to see. But then there's a process of that volume of people mm -hmm. becoming a family, becoming a congregation, becoming an influence in that city, and it takes time. 
I have not just a new friend, but I have also a family and they support me every day. I really feel that I can be who I am. I believe the welcome home is one of the most important messages that we deliver as a church. It's, it's the kingdom culture and the kingdom works wherever it goes. As my journey comes to an end here at Hillsong Sao Paulo, I can't help but think back on everything I've experienced visiting these global campuses. My experience of our church was always informed by what I'd seen at my own local campus. And whilst I've always known that we're part of a global church, I could never have anticipated just how significant what we get to be a part of really is. From the student in Moscow to the mother in Johannesburg, so many people across the globe have the chance to experience the meaning of welcome home. I've seen that when God moves, he transcends time, culture, histories and geography. I can see that God is on the move, binding us together under his banner, doing something significant as we gather under the name of Jesus. His spirit is present in our midst. Everything I think about when I think of 2020 as well, this is a significant year. And it's kind of what I'm feeling, you know, let's really believe that what God does in people's lives this year is significant. And I think about the fact, look, if we can just really awaken, even inside our own church, have a spiritual awakening, yeah. a, a renewing, and really believe that these are significant times, what God is wanting to do. Yeah. And so I pray that we are people who really believe for God to do something that is wonderfully significant. Isn't that powerful? Come on, let's stand together. Across Australia, we're gonna to sing together like a rushing wind. The next few minutes of this service, we're gonna lay hold of God, we're gonna pray. We're not just gonna pray from the platform. I pray across all locations that we all lean in and that we all pray together. This is a powerful time, a mighty time. We know that God answers prayer. We are believing like a rushing wind, the Spirit of God will come and fill this house with His glory, fill your house, your life with His glory. So everyone together, let's sing. Let's begin to lay hold of God in Jesus' Name. five prayer points. We're gonna lean in powerfully to these five prayer points. The first thing we're gonna pray for is the prosperity of Australia. In Bali, you're praying for Indonesia. We're gonna believe that 
just like we saw a start off last weekend, that God is gonna drench this country with rain in all the places where it's needed, that all fires are extinguished, that the drought comes to an end. I'm gonna ask Steve Dixon, our pastor up there in Queensland and in the Northern Territory, Steve, I'm gonna ask you to lead us for these next few moments. We're praying for Australia. In Bali, one more time, you pray for your country, but together, let's pray. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Brian, and it's great to see you and Bobby back as well. And thank you for the whole day. It's been fantastic. We appreciate you. Love you being here. You know, when people are thinking about Australia around the globe over these recent weeks and months, the name Australia has become synonymous with the things that Brian Brian has just mentioned. A place of drought, a place then of floods, a place of fires, and even recently the danger of, you know, plagues and viruses and all the rest of it. It sounds to me like some Old Testament issue that we've got to overcome. But I reckon we've got a New Testament answer. Because when the Old Testament finished with curse, the New Testament began with Jesus stepping in. And we're gonna believe that Jesus is gonna step in again. And we're gonna believe for a Holy Spirit empowered church to be the representative of faith and of Jesus in this place. I love the verse that Brian mentioned this morning in Exodus 10, he says, the Lord responded by shifting the wind. And why don't we believe that what we are about to pray into Australia right now, the Lord would take hold of it, would turn things around, would shift the winds to go from where they're coming to go to where they need to go, and we'll do it together. And before we pray, let me also read this to you. Psalm 91, Brian talked about, about the no plague will come to your house. But if you carry on reading, this is our promise that we're gonna pray into. From verse 14 of the same chapter, it says, the Lord says, I will rescue those who love me in Australia. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honour them. I will reward them with long life and give them salvation in Australia. So come on, let's believe across. Let's start to pray. Let's start to believe for the nation where the Lord has placed us in Jesus' Name. Lord, we come to You tonight with a united heart and spirit and voice because we believe that You are our God and we place our trust in You and we place our trust in Your Word. And we pray right now for the protection of the nation and the people of Australia. We pray, God, that nothing would overcome us. We declare our trust in You. We declare our trust in Your Word that no harm would come to our households in Jesus' Name. Lord, we pray right now for the prosperity of this nation. We pray, Lord, for the favour of God. We pray for the blessing of God to be evident. And when the name Australia is mentioned in days and weeks and months to come around the globe, it would not be because of plague and pestilence. It would be because there is something incredible that has turned around in this nation, that the droughts would be gone, that the fires would be quenched, and that Your Spirit would be doing fresh and new and beautiful and powerful things. And so we pray right now for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the nation of Australia. May this be known as the great Southland of the Holy Spirit. And may it be known across the nations of the world. May it be known in places of government. May it be known in the media. May it be known throughout your church. In Jesus' Name we pray. In Jesus' Name we pray for Australia. Amen. pray for significance. Jesus told the woman who broke the costly perfume what she had done was wonderfully significant. 
to Him. God can work through you and do what is wonderfully significant to the Kingdom of God. We're believing for the Lord to do significant things in our lives, but right now, in every location where you guys are in church and we're up and down and around the country right now, I'm gonna ask your local lead pastors or rather location pastors there, I'm gonna ask them to lead you in prayer. We'll take just a few moments, all right? Here at the hills, I'm gonna ask Sam and Kylie, our, our, uh, our location pastors, and I reckon uh, Nathaniel Beck, you guys should come up as well. And we're just gonna pray here. And so we'll join up again in a few moments, but wherever you guys are in every place, right now you pray for your location, you pray for your place. Are we up for this, Tim? In Melbourne, are we up for this? Absolutely, Pastor Brian. We are absolutely up for this. Okay, is that it? Well, fantastic. <laughs> Incredible. He needs to preach on Sunday nights. He's quick. <laughs> hey, um, here at Hills, I think the most significant thing that God could do in our lives is to work with us and use us to see people come to know Jesus like we've come to know Jesus. You know, on the day of Pentecost, it says, as Pastor Brian talked about, it says there's 120 in the room. Do you know the 120 had been meeting for probably 50 days and it never grew. But when the Holy Spirit came, the Bible says that 120 turned into 3,000. And I wanna say to us, I wanna say to us, what is impossible for us is possible when the Holy Spirit comes and fills us afresh. And I believe, I believe, I believe that this year He's flung wide the doors, He's rolled out the red carpet and He's inviting us into a fresh, new, powerful relationship with Him so that He can partner with us to see those people in our world saved and set free and come to know Jesus in a powerful way, Amen. And that's what we're gonna pray for and that's what we're gonna believe for. So hey, we come running up the carpet, we come through those doors, Will you say yes in a surrendered way to Him afresh, amen? So Father, we thank You. And Holy Spirit, we do take up Your invitation and we do run to You in a surrendered way. And we do ask that You would fill us afresh with Your power and with Your love and with Your might. Thank You, thank You, thank You for the freedom that You bring in oh, our come lives. On, church. But Lord, we are believing for salvation. We are believing that You would use us afresh in Jesus' Name. Lord, we just thank You, Lord, for every single person who is here tonight, Lord. And we pray that as we go out into our workplaces, as we go out into our places of study, and as we go to our own families, Lord, that You will use us to bring the power of the Holy Spirit and we will see salvation. Lord, I thank You that You are with us in every single sphere of our life. Lord, I pray for boldness as we go to work tomorrow. I pray for boldness as we go into our schools and our places of study. Lord, and I just pray that we will see salvation Jesus. in our city, that we will see hundreds, Lord, just like the day of Pentecost, that hundreds will come through because of salvation, that they will meet You individually and that people will be saved. Lord, for the mother's heart, Lord, I just pray that families with backsliders will come home that people who have never heard the Name of Jesus will hear of You and their hearts will be open. In the mighty Name of Jesus, we pray for salvation and revival. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. You know, I was looking at your shirt, Taya. The back of your shirt says, raise your voice. I presume it's talking about standing up against human trafficking or against human trafficking. But we're gonna raise our voice and praise and prayer to God in Jesus' Name. So come on, everyone here, everyone here, take a moment. You speak your language of the Spirit. You pray in your voice to the Lord. Let's lay hold of God. Let's raise our voice. Let's believe for God to do significant things in and through our house, in and through our campuses this year. Everyone, lift your voice, pray, pray, pray in Jesus' name. Yeah.
moving forward this year, I feel like the Lord's putting in my heart is an intensifying of the tangible presence of God. Yeah, I talked about it here already in that house in Acts chapter two, the Scripture says the whole house was filled. The whole house. It says they all, it was all in. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And like a rushing wind, like that, that powerful, powerful anticipation that we have in our songs. We're gonna believe, I'm gonna ask Rich and Cass to come. They're gonna lead us. And we're gonna believe across our church right now that there'll be a greater sense in the services in our own lives that maybe God will come alive in us like maybe He's never been for a long time or He's never been before. Anyone got faith for that? For that sense of God's presence to be on the rise? Come on, let's believe together in Jesus' Name, Amen. You know, church, um, Pastor Brian talked about Acts 2, where the day of Pentecost happened. And I believe that we need a Pentecostal church. That's what we are. We believe that, that the Holy Spirit is moving and active today. And I don't know about you, but I've lived a life without the Pentecostal thing. And I, I know what it is to have the Spirit moving and active. And, and the difference, it actually wasn't about Him. It was actually about me. It was, James 4, it says that if we draw near to God, He draws near to us. And sometimes, just sometimes, that means you have to forget about the person beside you and you need to cry out to Him. So right across the church, right across our church, let's cry out to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we need You by Your Holy Spirit to be alive, to be moving, to be active in our lives. And so Jesus, we don't hold back. We go after said we have Old Testament um, problems, but we are a New Testament church, but we are Pentecostals and the Holy Spirit wants to stir gifting within you. He has poured out gifts so that when we come face to face with the world, we have worlds of knowledge, we prophesy, we lay hands on the sick and they do recover. We have answers and hope and faith in Jesus Christ. So church, why don't you lift your hands to heaven and begin to pray that the Lord would stir the gifts that He has given you. Father God, right across your church now, for the individuals, God, from Bali to Brisbane, from Perth to Melbourne and here in the hills and the city, would you stir up the gifts that you've put on the people? Father God, I pray that they would be empowered to be agents of your Holy Spirit, that they would be agents for change, that they would have courage, God, that they would have fervour, that they would have faith to see you do something in this time. God, we believe that your Spirit is tangible, your church is about to come into fullness. Our services will be dynamic and faith-filled, that people will drive past our buildings and come in because You are here amongst us. And so God, we step out with courage and we stir up the gifts of the Spirit in us in Jesus' Name. Amen, amen. God, I love the Langtons. You know, I love that word suddenly and suddenly, suddenly like a mighty rushing wind. The whole house was filled with the presence of God. Robert Ferguson, he's gonna come, we're gonna lead us in prayer. We're gonna to believe together for some of those suddenness. When, when Pastor Brown talked about suddenly this morning, suddenly the Holy Spirit leapt within me and I believe God is preparing suddenness for 2020. Revival suddenness. Miracle suddenlies, families suddenlies, calling suddenlies, provision suddenlies. But every time suddenlies appeared in the Bible, the people reacted immediately and they were prepared. In the Old Testament, when suddenly He came on the temple and filled the place, the whole place with the glory of God, the people were united and ready. In Acts chapter two, they were united and ready. So are you hungry? Are you hungry in all the canvases? He promises to fill the hungry with good things. Are you united? Are you united? 
He promises to command blessing on the united. Are you expectant? He says, according to your faith, be it unto you. Are you expecting suddenlies? Why don't we ride around all the campuses, raise your, raise your hands, but this time hold the hand of the person next to you so that right around this thousands of people, hold it up, hold it up, thousands of people. We're gonna believe for suddenlies. We are expectant, united and hungry. Father God, I pray that You would do as You have promised. You have said, you will fill the hungry with good things. You've said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink, and out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. You've said, when your people unite together in one accord, you will command the blessing. You've said, as we pray in faith, you will act accordingly. And you have said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Well, we are praying as a church for the suddenness of God. Miracles. We are praying for a revival. We are praying for outpouring. We are praying for healings in the name of Jesus. Come on, church, raise your voice together. Suddenness. do all he's done before but we're believing he'll do what we've never seen before in Jesus name Amen <laughs> we're going to take a moment now we're going to take a moment to pray for you that that suddenly will touch your life that you'll get your own miracle the areas where you've been crying out to God and those things that are deepest uh, in your heart coming into this year we're going to we're going to conclude this part of our service right now because we're going to pray for you. We're going to believe for miracles in the lives of all the people of our church. Laura Tonga Navale, uh, very beautiful girl. She's got a very beautiful mum. Come on, in case you don't know, it's my daughter. I'm proud of her. I have a very beautiful father as well. Yes, yeah, so I've always thought that. Yeah, I've always thought I know. That. <laughs> Hello, church. Um, you know, as I was standing here on the side, I looked over and I just wanna say that not one of you are missed in this place. God sees each and every single one of you and He knows the deepest prayers, the deepest desires in your hearts. He sees your dreams. He knows exactly what's in your heart and what you're longing for and you're not missed tonight. And before we pray together for, for your personal needs, for what, for what you're desiring for, I wanna inspire your faith. In Ephesians 1 verse 15, it says this, I pray that you would experience the immeasurable power of God that is invested into us, that is made available to us through faith. And we have a choice right now as we pray together. We can, we can sit back and we can be timid or we can lean into the power and the authority that we have through the Name of Jesus. We have the power through the Name of 
Jesus, we have authority and we can believe for miracles. We can believe for breakthroughs. We can believe for the impossible to be made possible. We can believe that you will find your husband this year. We can believe that you will find your wife this year. We can pray for it and believe it. So why don't you begin to speak out the name of Jesus? Come on, lift up your hands towards heaven. Make your request known to God. God, you are our ever-present help in time of need. You are available. You are here. You are now. And right now, God, we we, we grant you our request, Lord God, and we we speak out our prayers to you, knowing that you, you will have your way in our lives, Lord God, that you are good and that you are faithful to the ones who love you, to people who follow you, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way. May cancers be healed in Jesus' name. May you provide, Lord Jesus. May your miracle working power be made available to each and every single one of us, Lord God. May the longings of our hearts, Lord God, may you meet us right there in Jesus' name. In everybody said, Amen. Amen. Just stop still for a moment in every location. It's everyone being still. You know, salvation is the most powerful thing in that people surrender their life to Jesus. And whether you're joining in from any of our other rooms in the parenting room or in this room right here, it's a simple question and it's this, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour? It's not by accident that you happen to be here. It's not by chance, but it is by the divine appointment of God. If there is anything that I've caught from this vision weekend, it is this, God is into your story. You see, God doesn't just call crowds, thank God for the crowds. Thank God for a congregation, but He calls individuals. He calls you, He calls me. And I don't know what people have said about God, but He is not standing back with His arms folded, friend. He is arms wide open. The Bible even says that He is near to the brokenhearted. And you might be standing in this room, you might be standing in other rooms and you might be here and you might've been brought by a friend and you don't know this God I'm talking about. Well, friend, He knows you and He knows you and He gave His life for you. And maybe today is the day where you turn around and you give your life to Him. Maybe at one point you made this decision, but you know in your heart you've walked away. Well, friend, today is the day where you can come back home and you can give your life to Him and you can surrender to Him. He has a plan and purpose for your life. And today is that day where it can all change and you draw a line in the sand and you say, today is a new beginning. Today is gonna be different. I'm walking out of here knowing this person that you're talking about, Jesus. Friend, today, have you surrendered your life to Him? Because if you haven't, I would love to lead you in a simple, powerful prayer of asking Him into your life. Can I have every head bowed, every eye closed, everywhere? And if that's you, if you're saying, yeah, Peter, would you lead me in this prayer you're about to pray of asking Jesus into my life? At one time I prayed that prayer, but in my heart I've walked away. The good news is He never walked away from you. Maybe you've never prayed this prayer. Maybe you've just turned up tonight. Friend, today is the day. Give your life to Jesus. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. It's not about rules and regulation. It is about a relationship with Him, a friendship with Jesus, friend. For the Bible says, whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for you, for me. That even when we missed the mark, He still gave up everything for you. I'm gonna count to three. When I get to three, if that's you, and you're saying, yeah, Lead me in this prayer you're about to pray. What I want you to do is raise your hand high enough and long enough for me to see it wherever you are and I'll include you in this prayer I'm about to pray. You ready? One, two, three, all over this place. Raise your hands right now. If you're saying that's me, yeah, people raising their hands. Come on, why don't believers just be believing for this moment? If that's you, if you're saying, yeah, lead me in this prayer, Peter. People up the back there, I'm sure in other rooms right now, people are responding. Come on, young and old, front to the back. Anyone else that wants to respond and give their life to Jesus over here in the side, throughout the floor. Beautiful, beautiful. Come on, church, let's give these people a round of applause. You may have raised your hand just then, and that's why we're applauding you, but you might not have. This is what we we wanna do. In a moment, the team's gonna begin to lead us in a song of worship. 
And wherever we can in our locations, wherever we can, I know uh, some of us don't have that, um, uh, that ability to do so, but wherever we can in all our locations, what I'm gonna ask you to do, the team are gonna lead us in a song of worship. If you raised your hand just then, I want you to do something. I want you to grab your belongings, come with a friend, come with a family member. And I want you to come and meet me down the front here because I wanna shake your hand. And in all your locations, I want you to do that as well. If you didn't raise your hand, but you know that you should have, this is for you as well. So wherever we can, the team are gonna begin to lead worship. Come on, why don't you leave your seat? Even if you didn't raise your hand, come on, come down the front. We're gonna applaud this day where you decided to follow Jesus. So come on, come on team. Let's applaud them church, people giving their life to Jesus. Come on, in all our locations, come and flood the front. Keep coming, keep coming. They're still coming, church. Come on. Keep coming. front in many of our locations and the people down here. Come on church, let's give these incredible people. And it's never too late to come down the front. So whenever you want to, you come down and look, even if you didn't come down the front, that's so fine. Because God saw the change that is taking place in your heart and there's already still people coming down here and it's absolutely beautiful. People making a decision to follow Jesus. This is absolutely amazing. This is what we're gonna do. As one big church family, those down the front, those maybe still in their seats in our other location, I want you to pray this prayer after me. It's a beautiful prayer, simple, powerful prayer of asking Jesus into your life. And don't worry, as one big church family, we're gonna say this together. So say this with me. Dear Jesus, come on, dear Jesus, today is a new day. I'm choosing you. I surrender everything. So come into my life, Lord. Forgive me. Give me a brand new start. I need you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Congratulations to everyone. And whether you're up the front in any of our locations, look, uh, once the service in your location dismisses um, out in the exits in the foyers, there's gonna be someone waving this around. They're actually trying to get your attention because we don't always see all the hands and we don't always get everyone out the front. So we wanna make sure we start a conversation with you and we wanna start it with a beautiful gift on behalf of our church this Vision Sunday to mark this day where you decided to follow Jesus and uh, we'd love to help you from here on out. So come on, one more time, church. Let's congratulate everyone. <laughs> well done, Pete. Well done. Yeah. Big congratulations. So make sure you get one of those New Testaments and I pray you really go on from here and serve Jesus. You're a man that God can do great things with in Jesus' Name. Don't underestimate what God can do to turn your life radically upside down in a beautiful and a powerful way. God is on your side in Jesus' Name. Amen, amen. Well, listen, as you can see, we're taking a moment here we're turning the platform around. It's only gonna take what I got told, 90 seconds. And so we're just gonna keep on going. Now listen, if some of you guys, you, you need to, to head out for whatever reason, you're welcome. But I pray that many of you will stay and I don't know what's happening in the other, in the other locations at all, but I don't know whether you're staying, whether you're going, but you're welcome to stay, I guess. So <laughs> whatever you want. But listen, Tuesday night, 7.30 p.m., 7.30. We gave you an extra half hour to get here. 7.30, we'll keep it sharp, but it's really important to me that you come. Because I've got so much now I wanna unload on you when it comes to specifics and the practical side of our vision. It's not just for leaders in our church or for volunteers, for whole church, all right? Visitors, you're welcome as well. And it really is the family together. It's kind of got a different tone to it, but it'll be very, very powerful. So wherever you are, wherever you're part of our church, make sure 
You do everything you can. You and your husband or your wife will have programs for the kids and we'll have a phenomenal heart and soul night, really speaking into the heart and the soul of our church. Amen. How are we going? Are we nearly there? You know what? These guys, we're in collective. I'm really excited about it. Can you explain to me? Are you Irish? Are you Irish? Can you explain to me why the Irish are always so good at music and writing songs and what, what would you put it down to? The fact there's nothing else to do there? Or? Yeah. There's, uh, there's not much other than just a sing a wee song on a Friday night, you know? That's about all we've got. Sing a wee song on a Friday night. That sounds pretty powerful. Hey, come on, church. Are we ready? Are we ready? Yeah. Come on, let's give these guys a huge welcome to Hillsong. Amen. Folks, uh, he's feeling up for a celebration. I'm feeling like that's appropriate. To be fully honest with you, Irish people always think it's a good time for a celebration, so uh, it's not unusual for us, but God is doing some special things in this church. You have an amazing church, folks, if you don't know it already. We have a faithful God tonight. He's worth celebrating. He's our light and our salvation. Let's sing together. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will find you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore. In my troubled sea, whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh my God. 
detain Whoa, whoa My soul Was not born to be caged There is liberty where you are How your freedom unchained my heart I am lost to the one the Lord When I'm with you my spirit soars from the grave. Folks, you guys are wild. I'll be honest with you, I wish I had worn my Fitbit before I got on here. Oh. Folks, we're, uh, we're a wee band all the way from a little place called Northern Ireland. And we just want to say it, in case it's not immediately obvious. Uh, we didn't come here to, to sing or dance for you, as nice as that might be. Uh, we came here to worship with you. Are you up for worship tonight? If you're looking for rock stars tonight, Northern Ireland's not the place to go looking. Go to California, you'll find one on every street. <laughs> but tonight, we just want to sing the truth about who God is and what he's done for us. Does that sound good? So let's sing a wee Irish hymn together. Does that sound good? Come. 
We could go a wee bit wilder, are you believe in tonight? Let's have ourselves a good old Irish shindig. Why don't you get your arm around your neighbor, whoever that is? Very good. Studies have shown that this is the most effective dating service on the planet, what we've just done right now, so watch out. All right. Are you up for celebrating tonight? All right, from the front to the back, let's see everybody jumping, come on!
Well, folks, is there any joy in this place tonight? We believe the truth of scripture. We believe the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let's make that our anthem. Excuse me for my summarize, my summarize to you. For my heart will fill my summarize, my summarize to you. While this breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. For the world is rising, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in this heart, I will praise you, Lord. Yeah, we're singing for joy tonight. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I last, in the shadows I see. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I cannot see. What I cannot fear, and the mind with faith arrives to you. God of mercy and love, I will praise you, Lord. We yeah, we worship you tonight. I you shine the glory, Lord, of light I feel alive in you. In your presence now I come alive, yet alive with you. There is strength when I say it. I will praise you. tonight I know that this is a celebration but I also know that we're real people we come in here with real scars and real struggles so sometimes maybe it doesn't feel like the most helpful thing in the world 
is for an Irish band to take the stage and force you to do Irish dancing and stuff. But <laughs> this is the truth. There are a lot of times in our lives where if we're fully honest, we don't feel like bringing our all in worship. And you know what? With the nicest possible phrasing, nobody cares what we feel. What we care about tonight is that our God is worthy of our praises in every season. He's good when life is not. He's perfect when life's not perfect. So let's open up our mouths. We're not singing of what we feel, but we're singing of what we know to be true and eternal tonight. That His joy will be our strength in the sorrows. Here we go. Oh, you're gonna be my joy. And the joy of the Lord is my strength in the sorrows. The joy of the Lord is my strength in the darkness. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Let me hear your voices. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I believe that. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, yeah. Even in the darkness, I'll dance. In the shadows, I'll sing. So folks, I don't know about you, but the first thing that I do in the morning is I reach over and I grab my iPhone. I'm pretty convinced it's not healthy and I think I might be doing it for emotional support, but that is the first thing that happens in the morning, right? And I pick it up and I have a look at the notifications. And at the minute I'm reading Apple News because I'm over 30, so those are the first notifications that come up. And, uh, <laughs> You know, it used to be a while ago that it wasn't so bad, but uh, now Apple News is turning into kind of like some pretty dark reading. Uh, it's pretty much equivalent to reading The Walking Dead, uh, <laughs> but just it's real. Um, and it's kind of terrifying to me. And I think sometimes if we keep listening, I guess, to this kind of negative media narrative that's all about finding a way to get us to click something because at our heart of hearts, we're all kind of miserable. If we do that, we're gonna be dragged down. When the truth is, when we open scripture instead of our iPhones for a wee change, what we find is that we've got a God who's still seated on the throne, who's still powerful, who's still in control. He has plans to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future. And we wanna put our trust in the name of Jesus tonight. His name is power in this place. You're the only answer to the darkness You're the only right among the wrong You're the only hope among the chaos You are the voice that calls me on Louder than every lie My story, every fight The truth won't chase away the night is your name is power over darkness freedom for the captives mercy for the broken and the hopeless your name is faith in the battle glory in the struggle Is real. 
scared of darkness Light arrives in heaven opens Holy Spirit, let us see it When you speak the church awakens We believe the change is coming Holy Spirit mighty to save. You're strong enough to heal. You care about us in this place. You're King of kings and Lord of lords, yet you're near to us tonight. And so we worship you. Your name is power over darkness, freedom for the captives, mercy for the broken and the hopeless. Your name is faithful in the battle, Lord, in the struggle. Mighty, it won't let us stop or fail us. Your name is power over darkness. Come on, freedom for the captives. Mercy for the broken and the hopeless. Your name is faithful, Lord. with you. Thank you so much for having us. Let's sing a victory song tonight. Let our praises remind all the darkness of how great and how mighty our God is. The battle belongs to the Lord and no one else. Here we go. 
not done enough singing already. Well, that was amazing. Thank you so much, young guys. Hey, church, I want to remind you of Tuesday night, our heart and soul night. I think that's something that we all need to be mindful of. That's something we all need to be at. I hope you've had an amazing day of Vision Sunday. Let me pray for you as you leave. Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you for what you've done, what you've imparted. And Lord, I thank you that as you spoke to us today, you birthed in something real, something special, something to encourage us and something to, to carry us into next week and into this year. We put our faith in you, Jesus, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. We love you, church. We love you, church. Have a great week.